Aloha, and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around the world. And we're reporting live from COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland. We're focusing today on climate vulnerable nations demanding justice and the coalition that's insisting on 1.5 to stay alive. It's an honor to have special envoy with us here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much. Could you share with us some of the priorities of the Climate Vulnerable Forum? I know it's- Thank you. The, this Climate Vulnerable Forum, it's a forum of 55 countries. The encouraging information is on the very first day of uh, this uh, COP26, we were 48. In, on the first day, seven new countries joined this Climate Vulnerable Forum. So now we are 55. Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina. She is the present president of this CVF. And it's a tenure of uh, two years. This Climate Vulnerable Forum, you know, from its name, it uh, means that uh, we all are vulnerable for the climate. So how we are going to utilize this COP26 for the benefit of the vulnerable countries? You see, before joining this COP, uh, these uh, 48 countries, they're very serious. Uh, last uh, about six months, we had the regional meetings, four regional meetings we had. There is the uh, Latin American region, Africa and Middle East region, Pacific region, and also Asia. Uh, we uh, discussed with all these 48 countries, what is their demand, what they uh, asked for this uh, COP26. So we prepared a document which we called Dhaka Glasgow Declaration. Uh, so this document consists of the, uh, rather you can say the issues of climate vulnerable forum countries, what they want to achieve from this COP26. I may mention very briefly, uh, later on, if necessary, I can put in detail also, uh, that um, uh, first one is the 1.5 degree. From uh, last uh, 2020, September, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina as the CBF chair, she called on all the countries to have their enhanced NDC. Because you know, last year, 30th December was the last day for declaration of enhanced NDC. But unfortunately, we find that this NDC uh, enhancement was not very satisfactory. And uh, this year, in August, we find the IPCC report that shows much more devastating facts. So it uh, made the CBF country much more curious, much more uh, see, demanding uh, outcome from the, this COP26. So number one uh, demand is 1.5 degree. So the developed country, especially because they are the most emitting country, uh, they need to commit in such a way that the globe sees 1.5 degree. Uh, you see, uh, with this 1.2 degree at present, how vulnerable the globe is. This year, the German flood, the uh, Canadian heat waves, and also forest wildfires. Uh, in Siberia also, we see the smokes. So this is taking uh, the globe towards an uh, unreturnable position. Uh, so now, this 1.5 degree. The second point we were telling that um, each year we need to have the opportunity to uh, declare the enhanced commitment. What is that? Uh, in COP uh, Paris Agreement, we thought that, okay, in each five years, all the country will have their enhanced NDC. But seeing the devastating uh, fact of uh, uh, which has been unveiled by the IPCC report, now we thought that uh, now time uh, is very less. We need to act very quickly. Uh, if uh, we uh, uh, have opportunity to uh, uh, enhance declaration in 2025, that will be too late for 2030. So uh, now we raised the demand that uh, each year there should be a platform that each of the country, and especially the emitting country, they can have their declaration. Maybe that will not be possible for the complete uh, NDC, but in any form of commitment, it may be 
commitment of enhanced uh, com uh, finance, maybe commitment of reducing the uh, carbon, reducing the uh, um, uh, ammonia and all this. The third point we are telling that is the $500 billion. So why 500? Earlier it was decided that 100 billion per year by 2020. We all know, unfortunately, the developed country, those who were supposed to uh, accommodate this fund, uh, 100 billion dollars, they failed, miserably failed to do it. Maximum, it was 80 billion. So uh, in 2020, they failed. In 2021, also, they are failing. So now we are uh, asking the developed country, OK, 21, 23, 24, you need to commit more so that you can mend this $500 billion. Uh, along with this, the issue of uh, the accessibility towards funds. Some of the develop, developing countries, they cannot access funds. The Green Climate Fund and other funds, uh, those who have the uh, green funds, but unfortunately, the system is so cumbersome. Some of the country, they have no capacity. And we are demanding that the system should be uh, much more uh, easy so that they can have the access. Same time, the demand for adaptation. We all know the developing country, they need much more fund on adaptation rather than the mitigation. So we demanded that 50-50, 50% for the adaptation, 50% for mitigation. Alongside, our demand continues with the uh, loss and damage. Santiago, Network for loss and damage that should give a better dividend for these uh, uh, vulnerable countries. So, with these issues, we are in the COP with this Dhaka Glasgow declaration. So far, what would you say are some of the highlights that you've seen in the first week and then leading up to these final 48 hours? Normally, it happens that. Last 48 hours is the most important uh, time. There are the last 24 hours. Uh, so we are at the last leg. Mm, uh, so far, I was discussing with uh, some of our senior colleagues. They were telling, so far, the result is not satisfactory. So far, the, the big achievements we did not find, but uh, they are not hopeless. We are not also hopeless. We, we think that, yes, much more achievement could be uh, from this COP because this COP is a special type of COP. Uh, it is happening after two years and it is happening in the midst of the COVID. So the uh, uh, expectation is different. Uh, special commitment for 100 billion, 500 billion. Uh, we did not find so many enthusiasm in this, but uh, we need to be realistic. Because the developing country, developed country, the uh, multilateral development banks, uh, and um, uh, the relations of bilateral, um, so this grooms in this uh, COP, and delivery comes later on. So some people, if they think that at the end of the COP we will fill uh, our banks with money and go back to home, that is impossible proposition. So. We put our demand, uh, we put the justification, and I believe this time, uh, after um, uh, US returning in uh, uh, Paris Agreement, returning back in Paris Agreement, that created so many enthusiasm. And yesterday, uh, joint declaration of China and the USA, it made a further enthusiasm um, among all the uh, developed countries. And, uh, uh, some developed country, they committed small fund for adaptation, small fund for different activities. And these are also giving synergy effect, I understand. So I think this COP next 24 hours uh, will deliver much more. And uh, uh, at the end, obviously, uh, we will be back uh, with uh, rather good experience uh, looking forward uh, for further better in future. Excellent. When we look at the last 24 hours that's coming up and you look at what's happened, we, how close are we to the 1.5? I know Secretary General Guterres sent back the NDCs and asked people to revise them. Do you think we're getting close to 1.5 or how do you think that will show up in the next 48 hours? No, still not, still not. 
but um, again, I'm telling that I'm um, uh, optimistic. Uh, optimistic in this sense uh, because um, the IPCC report uh, has been discussed uh, uh, in different side events uh, in this COP also. And I understand the countries, those who emit more, they will come uh, to their sense. They will understand that um, how much uh, carbon they emit and uh, what devastation is being uh, uh, happening and going to happen. Uh, this will bring them in sense. And uh, as because this is not the platform to have their enhanced uh, NDC. Uh, I understand that um, any time, as per the Paris Agreement, any time uh, a country can have their enhanced declaration, uh, we strongly believe, especially the CDF country, we strongly believe that the developed country, they will uh, come back very soon with their enhanced uh, declaration. Excellent. And do you think we were able to rebuild confidence in international climate cooperation and accelerate adaptation? And how has the Climate Emergency Pact been developing so far with the push by the Climate Vulnerable Forum? We have rightly identified the issue. This is the place where we achieve the best uh, because you see the synergic effects, uh, the uh, moral uh, courage, uh, the issue of handling all the um, uh, vulnerable issues together. Uh, I understand that this will uh, give the whole globe a, a very dynamic, reasonable, timely, uh, opportunities uh, to bring back uh, our nature, uh, the Mother Earth. Wonderful. And we know leading up to this, there were two important meetings that you were able to have huge impacts. But the IUCN, the Climate Crisis Commission, and maybe you could share about how that was coming along in Marseille. Um, uh, you see, the issues uh, of uh, this um, uh, IUCN. Uh, global uh, temperature rising, uh, the issues of the vulnerability, bringing back the nature. You see, all the issues has been discussed and being discussed uh, in this uh, COP26. And um, you know, um, we had um, the um, chairs uh, not yesterday, today also, um, and uh, uh, the uh, Final version will come up uh, tomorrow, uh, which will uh, um, reflect the aspirations of uh, all the countries. I want to share one piece of information that the civil society, uh, uh, so many civil society organizations, uh, they were putting their demand and uh, uh, like other COP, they also uh, come up with, in, in one platform Yesterday, I was hearing that 200, 250, 300 organizations, uh, they have assembled with their demands of 1.5, 50, 50, uh, 500 billion or 100 billion each year, all this. So this afternoon, the civil society organization, they handed over a document to us, uh, which is uh, about uh, 400 um, uh, organizations, they gathered together. Uh, with these uh, views. So uh, I understand that um, uh, we are uh, in same board, same platform, putting our demands in a strong voice, you know, which will be able to reach to the uh, countries, those who emit more. So it's exciting to see the strong civil society coming together, calling for yeah. a strong moral architecture with the climate vulnerable Forum nations. It's a it's a very strong coalition for a stronger future and a healthy planet. Exactly. We also discuss with the uh, LDC. Bangladesh is a uh, LDC country. You know again, G77 plus China, uh, AOC, uh, small island uh, countries. So we are discussing in different uh, platform, different forum. You know, climate vulnerable forum. Um, it is not a negotiating uh, agency. It is not a negotiating platform, rather uh, it advocates uh, for the different issues, as I mentioned. Uh, so um, the role of uh, CDF uh, is much more helpful for all these uh, negotiating groups. 
uh, so that we put them uh, some uh, uh, same information, um, bringing them in the same platform, uh, giving them much more uh, uh, so encouragement, uh, going together uh, and uh, working together each achieve more. Yes, no, and it's exciting to see how everyone comes together to then come together for a common vision. Maybe the other side that people aren't aware of is how is climate crisis impacting the people of Bangladesh where you live at home? So they understand why this is such an existential threat and really a life or death issue. You know, Bangladesh uh, exactly is a very uh, climate uh, event prone country. Last year, uh, we had about four uh, or five uh, big floods along with the cyclone Ampan. Uh, you know how uh, Bangladesh has become so resilient. In, in 1917, we had a cyclone uh, Gorki, cyclone Bola. So that uh, uh, caused uh, one million lives. Believe me, one million lives. The same magnitude uh, uh, cyclone last year named Ampan, it could cause only uh, not more than 50 lives. We understand that uh, a single life is very precious, very uh, it's uh, invaluable. But uh, you see, from 1 million to 50, from 1 million to less than 100, how it could be possible? Yes, Bangladesh, a resilient country, uh, vulnerable. But um, now, uh, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister, who is again the chair of the CVF, she declared a plan which she called Mozib Prosperity, Climate Prosperity Plan. It's an impossible proposition, it seems like, that climate uh, is vulnerability. How climate can be a prosperity plan? So we think Bangladesh, as we had the you know, Climate Trust Fund, that is the first Climate Trust Fund from our own money. Uh, we spent a huge amount of money uh, in the, uh, through this uh, Climate Trust Fund. Each year, not less than $5 billion we spent uh, for the climate causes. Uh, so, with a holistic approach involving both public sector and private sector, uh, we prepared a plan which we called the Climate Prosperity Plan. And it is named after our father of the nation, Muslim Climate Prosperity Plan. And the very encouraging thing is this, that uh, 37 countries uh, of this uh, Climate Vulnerable Forum they are also now encouraged, they show their interest that they want to have similar type of climate prosperity plan. Uh, here, that uh, we need to turn the challenges into opportunities. Obviously, uh, we don't contribute in this uh, climate uh, degradation, uh, but unfortunately, we are the worst um, heat country uh, of these uh, climate disadvantages. Likewise, all the climate vulnerable countries. So we need to look into that how best we can utilize our resources for research, uh, for mitigating the issues, which can turn the uh, challenges into opportunities. So we, uh, we will be asking the globe also, the development partners also, the multilateral banks also, to put their resources there for the common people. Well, that's an excellent point. Can you think of one or two other examples of learning from each other in the Climate Vulnerable Forum that they were, in this case, seeing the excellent promising practice you were doing in Bangladesh, but when you meet, have you heard other things from maybe Marshall Islands or other countries that were also positive things you could bring home as well to help improve Bangladesh? Um, I can cite one example from Bangladesh again. That is, uh, let me share you what one adaptation uh, practice. What happened in our country, uh, we have very less uh, quantity of land. You know, 165 million people having a uh, per square kilometer about 1,250 per person. Believe me, per square kilometer, 1,250 per person. Uh, very less uh, land for our food production. So what happened, uh, once uh, a research was going on, that how best the paddy field, above the paddy uh, rice field, there can be some crippling vegetables. So putting a structure on it, 
but not the whole land, keeping some gap so that sunlight can enter. So we had the two-storied agriculture. Hmm. Okay. Then what happened? One researcher, he started putting solar panel above the crippling structure. So it became three-story. Now, another researcher, he thought that, okay, in our country, uh, we used to face floods very frequently. So a huge quantity of land uh, is underwater. Last year, this happened that uh, with continuous flooding, uh, they were not getting the uh, land for the seedlings of rice. So what they did, they made a raft, uh, putting the um, uh, river weeds, putting some uh, uh, mud on it, and put the seedlings. So uh, in the water, there is fish. On the water, there is a raft. On the raft, there are um, uh, crops. And above the raft, uh, there is a structure which triples vegetable. And above that, the uh, solar. So you can say for a story. So we need to innovate. That is very sustainable and also innovative. innovative. And shows exactly. the ingenuity of indigenous peoples and peoples around the world that we can solve this situation. And more importantly, make sure that we have enough for everyone on Earth. Exactly. Uh, we need to uh, bring prosperity uh, from our limited resources. If you consider the global resources, these are also again limited. And uh, uh, the present globe consumes almost what it produces. Uh, so what is next? We used to tell always that we need to give back this planet to our children from whom we borrowed it. But uh, are we doing the right thing? Are we uh, um, uh, competent enough to give back the same planet which you got for our children? So these types of innovative solution, I believe this may bring some prosperity, some new opportunities, but uh, we should not forget about 1.5, not forget 500 billion, 50, 50. And um, what our prime minister says as the CBF president, that we need to act now, no lip service, no lip service, not only commitment, but you need to act and you need to act today. Some people say we need to act yesterday. So we need to act today, not tomorrow. This is the quote from our prime minister that act today. No, and maybe one action that did happen that shows there is momentum is the UN Human Rights Council did adopt a UN Special Rapporteur for Climate Change. Do you think that will be a positive tool to help as we go forward? You have raised a very valid uh, issue. Yes, uh, we uh, demanded that um, uh, human rights report here uh, in Human Rights Commission, there should be a report here on the climate and this has been accepted. We are going to put uh, one report here very soon. I, I understand this is the recognition of the vulnerable countries uh, that uh, um, it creates an opportunity for raising voice in, and in that platform also that may help us in achieving the issues which we are fighting for. Excellent and I know we're getting close to the end of time and I really do appreciate you making time right there in the middle of the negotiations. So right now it is seven o'clock at night so in 24 hours we should have a result, what do you think we'll see on the paper? What would you hope to see just 24 hours from now as the clock is counting down? I'm very, I'm very optimistic. You see, we are negotiating for last 26 years. It's more. Uh, so we have achieved, but we need to achieve much more. Uh, so today is good, tomorrow is better. That is excellent. And when you return, uh, what will be some of the areas that you will then take to uh, continue the hard work that you've been doing? What do you think are some of the things? Um, the the, the uh, Dhaka Glasgow Declaration, which I mentioned. Um, today also, we discussed with Ghana. Ghana is the next president of the Climate Vulnerable Forum. You know, Climate Vulnerable Forum, it runs with a troika, the present, past, and future. 
So Ghana will take over the presidency of CBF in next uh, May. So uh, we took them in our uh, board. We discussed with them also of how best we can take forward the agenda of this Dhaka Glasgow declaration uh, so that we can present a better world to our future generation. Uh, and um, Ghana, along with Marshall Island, who is the past president, uh, we are working hard. Uh, and uh, we are committed that uh, we will work very seriously on implementation of this DACA Glasgow declaration. Thank you again so much. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. And hopefully it will be as positive as, as you're saying. But I think what you really bring up with the Climate Vulnerable Forum is how much work it takes. And it's that commitment to social change to make sure that we look at the Paris Agreement, but also the 2030 agenda of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Exactly. Um, uh, looking into the SDG, uh, again, the Climate Prosperity Plan in our country, we have the 10 years plan of climate prosperity, which will again help in achieving the SDG goals. And you know, this year, uh, the, uh, uh, the study, of the UN and also the uh, SDSN shows that Bangladesh achieved in SDG best. So the best achievement, it, it came from, again, uh, some of the issues of climate uh, vulnerability uh, and uh, bringing this towards prosperity. Once again, Special Envoy, thank you so much for making time in the final 24 hours of the negotiations. We wish you all the best and we'll see you in the halls of the blue zone. And we hope that the blue zone will also be a blue Pacific and we'll have a blue economy and a much better world going forward. And it is interesting because Glasgow is maybe where James Watt created the steam engine and many other things, but maybe this is the chance that the world will have a new vision of what matters most for all of us. Hope for the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Aloha. Bye. Bye.